On August 30th, 1977, there lived a family known as the Hodgson family in the borough of Enfield in North London. The Hodgson family consisted of a single mother, Peggy, and her four children, the two older girls, Margaret and Janet, ages 12 and 11, as well as the two other boys, Johnny, age 10, and Billy, age 7. The paranormal happenings began on the night of August 30th, when the mother was woken up by Janet as she claimed both of her brother's beds were rumbling on their own. Peggy told Janet just to go back to bed. However, the night after that, the noise continued. Once woken up, Peggy went upstairs to the boy's room to see what was going on, only to find a dresser drawer traveling around the room by an invisible force. When she attempted stopping it, the drawer moved to the door, preventing the family from escaping. The police were then called and they investigated the household. One of the officers saw a chair slide straight across the floor with no explanation of how it moved on its own. She then checked for anything that might have pulled it, such as wires and such among other things, and found nothing. She even placed a marble in the exact same spot the chair was originally and the marble didn't roll one bit. The police then stated they weren't able to get involved because there was no crime committed. Once word got out of these strange happenings, news of of this case spread like wildfire. Paranormal investigators and skeptics alike flocked to this case. Morris Gross, an inventor and investigator of supernatural events, and writer Guy Lyon Playfair were two of the most involved people in this poltergeist, while on the skeptic side were professors of psychology John Beloff and Atina Gregory, as well as stage magicians and members of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry Joel Nickel, Bob Cowdy, and Milbourne Christopher. Contrary to the movie, Ed and Lorraine Warren were not that involved with this occurrence, the Warrens actually showed up without invitation and only stayed for one day. Morris Gross was by far the one most involved. Strange occurrences were witnessed during this investigation, such as evil voices heard throughout the house, Lego bricks flying around the living room, some of the children levitating, chairs and other furniture moved and even flipped on their own, matches catching fire without being lit, pools of water suddenly appearing on the kitchen floor, and unexplainable chills in the air at random times and spots in the home. When Vic and Peggy Nottingham, neighbors the Hodgson family went to for help, went to investigate, the noises coming from the walls freaked even them out. There were also 30 other people who witnessed happenings like this in the Hodgson house. But none of these things compared to the kind of activity that seemed to be attracted to the younger daughter, Janet. Out of all the kids who levitated, Janet was the one spotted levitating by two neighbors passing by outside looking up at her bedroom window. This is a series of photographs that caught Janet supposedly being dragged out of her bed by an invisible force. The reason why I say supposedly is due to heavy criticism of the photos because of how they look as if Janet is just jumping off the bed. Morris and Guy said they heard, quote, curious whistling and barking noises coming from Janet's general direction. One of the neighbors said to have seen Margaret lying on the floor while Janet was missing. After looking under the beds to find her, the neighbor stood up and found her lying on the corner of the room on top of a dresser in a bizarre sleeping position. Mrs. Nottingham even claimed Janet flew across the room by the chair she was sitting on, moving on its own and throwing her. According to the two girls, the strange happening started after they played with a Ouija board. However, the most intriguing part of this case was the voice that would come through Janet. Janet had the ability to channel a very dark and extremely rough, demonic sounding voice. This was said to be the voice of a man who had died in that house years earlier named Bill Wilkins. This is an interview recording of Janet speaking in this voice. These teenage sisters believe they're haunted well, by a poltergeist. I was going to ask the same question as I asked earlier. How many voices are there? Six, I think. 
600 devices. I know, it's a joke. <laughs> How many really are there, Margaret? I think so far we've had 10 Three. Um, sensible voices. But the rest of the names are absolute rubbish. How does it feel to be haunted by a poltergeist? It's not haunted. Why isn't it haunted? I don't know. Does I'll... it frighten you, the things that happen here? Oh, well, it did first, but now I've got more oh, used to it. And you learn to accept the things that happen. It slanger covered it, Mum. My idiot, Mum. Slanger bookshelf at Mum. Yeah. Have you tried telling it to go away? Yes, yeah. many times. No, nothing. Uh, what does it reply? Mm. No, it won't. It's day another six, seven years. What about the voices? When when did the voices start? December the 12th. December the 12th? Yes. And how did they start? Well, one night Mr. Grove was talking about it, about 8 30. He said, All we need now is the voices to talk. And that night I went to bed and I can't remember exactly what happened. And What's that knocking? Yeah, that's, you can hear it now. I was doing that yesterday morning and Peggy was on her own. So she came in to us because you know, it wasn't her, she came in. We sat together and we heard it. And I counted down my knocks and there was 14 altogether. And it's doing it again now. That was three knocks just now? Yes, it goes in threes and twos. When we first got contacted, this was when Mr. Bro said, if there's anyone there, knock twice for yes, and if not, one for no. I wonder if we did that now, whether it would answer. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Nothing. No. no. It doesn't always do it to order. No. It doesn't. It goes in spasms. Like we're talking now. It may not now, after you've said that, but you won't do it when you want it to strike away, you know. Does, when you hear the voice and it comes out, where does it come from? Here, your throat? No. Where do you feel it comes Back from? Back of the neck. Back of the neck. And so it must be as if it's somebody else speaking then, when you hear yeah, it. Yeah, behind us. I wonder... Do you think there's anyone there just now? Yeah, I do. Who's that? What? Who's that, Janet? Pardon? Who? Stuart Certain. Stuart Certain, and he's one of the voices? Yeah. Why do you think he comes and speaks through you? To noise, to annoy us. Does he ever say anything nice? Well... I don't know really. Shall we Says. try and speak to him? No. We'll see if he'll speak to us. Yeah. Is anybody there? No, no. Who's there? Doctor. Doctor Who? Uh, Goose chase is here. Well, Pat's guy, Pat, you've got something to say, son. Yeah. I'd like to know how you 
make this noise without bashing Janet's vocal cords to pieces. If I do yeah. it for half a minute, I get a sore throat. In the video, Janet states that these experiences their family had been undergoing wasn't a haunting. She said, quote, I'm not sure the poltergeist was truly evil. It was almost as if it wanted to be a part of our family. It didn't want to hurt us. It had died there and wanted to be at rest. The only way it could communicate was through me and my sister. Morris was asked whether or not it was possible the voice coming from Janet could have just been a trick that many ventriloquists use for performances. Morris stated they proved the girls didn't have such talents and also that there's no way even a ventriloquist could keep a voice like this up for as long as Janet did because this voice would come out of Janet for up to three hours and to keep up a voice like that would do serious damage to the vocal cords. On top of that, as an experiment, the investigators filled Janet's mouth with water and the voice still came through. Janet claimed that when the voice would come out, it felt like it wasn't coming from her, but something behind her, and that the physical sensation was that of something putting their hand on the back of her neck. After a priest had visited the home, the occurrences started to subside, though they never fully went away. Since then, a BBC documentary has been made of the Enfield Poltergeist, as well as the book by Guy Lyne Playfair, titled This House is Haunted, The True Story of the Enfield Poltergeist. In 2016, the film The Conjuring 2, directed by James Wan, was made after the massive success of the first Conjuring film. Though contrary to what most people might guess, Janet was actually very upset to find out the movie was being made, and to this day, she isn't very comfortable being asked about the things she experienced those two years.